Everybody, guess what? Braun GP gets bought. News out of Europe this morning that Mercedes-Benz has confirmed a deal to take a majority stake in the Ross Braun racing outfit. What's that mean for the team and its drivers? Well, we'll let you know. Also, new footage from that Veyron accident we talked about last week. Alonso and Massa end up getting stuck. New BMW 5 Series spy photos from SoCal, and oh yeah, it's Carporn Monday with the McLaren MP4-12C. Everyone loves porn, right? Especially when cars are involved. What's up, everybody? I'm Derek D. You're checking out Fast Lane Daily. Come on, get over the Mondays. I think I got a case of the Mondays. I got to get over it. All right, I'm good. We're living in the Fast Lane, baby. Tuning in the Fast Lane Daily. We're starting the week off with some shocking F1 news. Mercedes has confirmed it will buy a 45% stake in Braun GP. Such a deal in alignment with an Abu Dhabi based investment company, what a surprise, which will also take a 30% cut of Braun, is said to officially rename Braun GP to Mercedes Grand Prix for the 2010 season, or MGP as I like to call it. It's no surprise though as Mercedes continues to distance themselves from their decade and a half partnership with McLaren. Looking to stay within the sport, Mercedes turned to one of the big names in the business and 2009 engine customer Ross Braun. But what's this mean for the drivers of both McLaren and former Braun outfits? Well, rumor has it that Mercedes would like an all-German lineup for the new team, while McLaren could be going all-British. Wait, I, be I believe that's called racial profiling, In, You know, we just want Germans for our team. I don't know. Sounds a little profilish. But anyway, with Jensen Button making a few trips to the McLaren factory in the past few weeks, could this mean a Senna Pro situation for 2010? Two world champions side by side on the same team? Well, only time will tell. But we sure as hell know that Honda is kicking themselves in the ass right now. Two years after selling their F1 outfit, Ross Braun turned into a championship status team that just got bought out by one of the biggest names in the business. Yikes. Of course, Leo the Suit will have more news on the Braun GP buyout and driver situation on Thursday's episode of Shakedown, so tune into that. And last week we showed you the footage of a Bugatti Veyron that crashed into a saltwater lake in Texas. Yes, that. Well today, we've got actual footage of the Veyron as it crashed into the lake. We want to thank everyone who sent us about 50 emails regarding this video. Anyway, let's have a look. That's a Lambo, dude. Oh, oh, he's be wrecked. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Wow. A million and a half bucks taking a plunge. Terrible. Well, that video was shot by two guys driving on an adjacent roadway just admiring the car. I swear, what are the odds of filming a car and all of a sudden it just crashing? And, and a Bugatti Veyron, no less. Dude, go play the lottery. You'll probably win. Well, according to Jalopnik, the owner of Mr. Andy House was quoted as saying he dropped his phone and wasn't paying attention, thus resulting in the accident. In a weird twist of events, though, it was discovered that the owner of the Veyron is also the owner of the famous Eddie Griffin crash for Arienzo. Yes, you remember that? Mr. House owns an exotic car restoration and repair business called Performance Auto Sales and is noted to be one of the largest salvage auto dealers in the world. I guess he now has an even bigger project to work on these days. You go ahead and put that Enzo aside. Or maybe pay attention when you're driving a friggin' Veyron. Jeez. <sighs> Well, you always hear stories of rich guys who buy an expensive car, whether it be a Ferrari, Lamborghini, Bugatti, Maserati, whatever. And they don't know what the hell they're doing, and they end up in a ditch, in a wall, or like Mr. Genius, in a friggin' lake. Wow. But what about when it happens to straight-up professionals like Luca Montezemolo, Felipe Massa, and Fernando Alonso? Fernando Alonso. Is that guy's got an awesome name. Well, yesterday at Ferrari's World Finals in Valencia, while doing a parade lap of the circuit for the fans at a Ferrari California, Luca Montezemolo, who was driving, decided to turn into the gravel and soon realized Ferraris don't work too well on loose ground. Felipe Massa and Fernando Alonso, Fernando Alonso, were riding on the back of the car, and as you can see here, they had quite the trouble with grip. Massa and Alonso even jumped out to try to push the beached car, but to no avail. Always like to see the pros mess up once in a while, right, Ian? That's what she said. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't work there, so. But nice try. I like where your head's at. I guess you could say they were just spinning their wheels. <laughs> I guess they were stopped in their tracks. <laughs> they really were beaching it that day, Ian. Because <laughs> they're in look at the sand. Okay, that was terrible. Now on to the internet rumor mill. Our good friend and automotive photographer Jason Thorgelson 
was out and about in Los Angeles last Friday when he spotted a group of BMW prototypes chilling right off the Pacific Coast Highway. Well, it turns out that Jason successfully nabbed clean spy shots of the new BMW 5 Series. Set for a reveal next week, the new Fiverr looks to be undergoing some final reliability shakedown tests in sunny California. What a great job for the engineers, reliability testing on the PCH. Anyway, along with the 5 Series, Jason also spotted a few other BMW mules, including mules, I'm sorry, including an X6M, X6 Hybrid, 5 Series GT, and 7 Series. If you want to check out more of Jason's photos, go to jtphotos.net. What up, Jay? Next up, some car porn and shakedown testing with the new McLaren MP4-12C. That's some hot car porn, and it's up after this. That's what she said. Subscribing costs nothing. Daily, not monthly. And our cars actually move. Fastlane Daily is fast and fresh and here to stay. Hi, I'm Dick Glover, Technical Director, and this is where we work. We've been in McLaren Technology Centre since 2003, and under one roof we've got three uh, world-class engineering companies, McLaren Racing, McLaren Electronics, and in the heart of the building, McLaren Automotive. We have a fantastic heritage of uh, technology and engineering excellence within this building, and McLaren Automotive is able to draw on that heritage and all of that technology to develop the world's best high-performance sports cars. And as you'd expect from a high-performance sports car, we're taking in all of the usual race tracks and test circuits. We've been to the race track, the Nürburgring Nordschleife, and that's a, a great test for the car's durability, but it's high speed cornering performance. The Top Gear circuit at Dunsfold is a favourite of ours. It's got its own unique challenges and is very close to our base here in Woking. But uh, as well as an endless uh, range of public roads, motorways, B roads, bumpy and smooth, uh, we've also taken in a couple of very extreme areas as well. The Arctic Circle, we test uh, the car in sub-zero temperatures on snow and ice, uh, but we've also visited Bahrain and tested the car in super high temperatures, uh, both for performance and its ability to function in those very extreme desert temperatures. It was a very big decision for me to leave racing and join a road car project but uh, there are many similarities and it's very exciting and challenging to be involved in a performance road car project. To complement that we have a, a number of engineers and technicians from mainstream automotive. You sometimes have to step back and uh, to realise how lucky you are. Um, it's an awesome job, it's great fun. The 12C is a great opportunity for us here at McLaren starting with a clean sheet of paper and a list of no compromise objectives and targets. It's been a huge mountain of work, but McLaren's way of doing things, harnessing the very latest technology, focusing on amazing attention to detail, will produce a market-leading car in this segment. Yeah, that is a pretty badass car, but what's up with these names for all these exotic cars? I mean, MP4-12C, I mean, I know why they use it, but it sounds like some sort of video compression our editors use on the show. Am I right? A little bit? A little bit? A little bit? All right, well that about does it for Fast Lane Daily today. I'm Derek D. You guys have a great Monday. I know mine got started off all right. Bye.